Nice to see you all. Good morning. Good to be here again. Thank you so much for asking me. Thank you to my good friend Barat for, for personally asking me. Um, we had a communications blackout recently between Barrett and I because he was, uh, was travelling somewhere, some country where they block you. I, think, I can't think where that would be. Anyway, thank you for asking me. Very nice to see you all. Um, so you're right, Hats, that I am now chairing the Health and Social Care Select Committee. And we think, we often think that Parliament gets a bad rap. And that's because the only bit, really, that the public see is for 30 minutes on a Wednesday lunchtime. And that's not really the House of Commons. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot more that goes on. There's a lot more uh, quality over quantity in the chamber. And the really big secret, the, the best kept secret of Westminster, if you like, is what goes on on the Select Committee Corridor. And uh, it's where we leave our politics at the door and we follow the evidence. So the Health and Social Care Committee, we think about much of our work through the lens of pharmacy and what role it plays, high quality health care that it delivers and the potential for it to do more. Why would I say that? Why do I constantly say that to my members? Because my view, going back to when I was the pharmacy minister and through the various roles I've had, is that the health and care, and, and Hattel is quite right to say that my view on investment in health services and the outcomes that we get, health and care don't work without pharmacy. It's as simple as that, really. Primary care, which I've held the brief in government for that, primary care isn't complete without pharmacy. Far too often primary care is thought of as being general practice. Wrong. Secondary care is all too often blocked without hospital pharmacy. And social care is significantly harder in care settings and in people's homes without pharmacy. So it has to be at the heart of any future vision for the NHS. I was speaking at a New Statesman event last week titled The Future of Healthcare, where I was saying this as well. And it has to be at the heart of healthcare delivery in England integrated into key decision making from the very start rather than just being an afterthought. And through my work in Parliament over many years, be that now as chair of the committee, as, as just an MP for Winchester, or that many health related all party groups that I've led, I, I'm a member of, and I, and I look back at my time as pharmacy minister, and I'm all too aware of the challenges that, that you face and still face, but I, but I still know Despite the progress that we've made, there's a huge untapped potential in pharmacy to try to transform the way that health and care is delivered, how patients access the support that they need, and how the future sustainability of the NHS that Hattel mentioned can actually be delivered. So I've said that pharmacy often features in the work of our committee, and it, and it does. But the role of pharmacy is featured in evidence that we've gathered across inquiries on prevention, more on that in a moment, on integrated care systems, and I know people here who work within our ICBs, on future cancer, which we were in Singapore the week before last talking about as part of our inquiry, and our big workforce inquiry. You can see how pharmacy is a thread that runs through all of them. But earlier this year, to try and bring that together, we launched a standalone inquiry into pharmacy. It wouldn't surprise anyone in this room that, that I, as chair of the committee, was going to make sure that we did that, and we did. So this really is a chance for us to focus on the sector itself, to consider some of the, the good progress that has been made, and it would be churlish to say it hasn't, and to drill down into some of the challenges and some of the potential that, there, that lies ahead. We want to build on the groundwork that many in the pharmacy sector, many in this room today, have put in place. We want to cover as many of the different services within the pharmacy sector as we can, so pharmacy in our communities, in hospitals and general practice. And we would certainly be interested in incorporating the views of the independent sector into our inquiry. And I see Leila, Leila Hambeck is here today, you're going to hear later on, um, who is due to give evidence to us on Tuesday when the inquiry was meant to start, but something called the King's Speech has, has bumped us back a couple of weeks, but there you go, yeah, he's the boss. So the key question that we're seeking to answer is, and I quote, what, what does the future of pharmacy look like? What, what must the government do in, in the present to ensure the best chance of that future being realised? And, and I want to say, because I, I think there would be some, you would be forgiven some cynicism for thinking another inquiry. 
another report. We are not starting from day one as if no one's ever considered this before. You know, we stand on the shoulders of the work that's been done in the past, the work that I did in government, the work that, you know, Community Pharmacy England, King's Fund have recently done with their big piece of work. The brilliant thesis from the University of Bath that, that Barrett and Sigma stood behind, which we launched at the House of Commons earlier this summer. We stand on the shoulders of all that work and we build on it. And we seek to keep this issue at the forefront of political debate. I can tell you with my benefit of my experience as a, as a minister is that government has the tendency to think that it has ticked a box, to think that it has covered a subject, and then to move on to the next thing. The news cycle is so fast these days. Select committees can keep things live, can keep things real. That's one of the reasons that we're doing it. So our role as a committee is to scrutinize the department and all of the public bodies that, that sit around it. So we have Amanda Pritchard, the head of the NHS, in the week after next. Uh, and hence our focus on what the government can do. As well as wanting to incorporate as many different voices into the sector as we can, we want to cover many of the key issues as we are able to. But the key issues that we're all familiar with, or those that might benefit from increased attention from the committee shining a light on, will be, will be forward-looking. We will we'll come up with solutions and recommendations direct for government that they can pick up, and it will inform the next government, whatever colour that is, uh, as much as it will the current government. The first public evidence session will be taking place very soon. As I say, it was meant to be Tuesday, and it will be an opportunity for witnesses, I suppose, to give an introduction to the challenges and the opportunities in the sector. Everything that's said will be in Hansard. It will be live on parliament.tv. And then we'll consider the issues with broad brush strokes. We'll eke out where there's potential to dig further into future sessions. And, and there's an offer to all of you in this room that this inquiry is a live piece of work it is there for you to shape it. It is there for you to make suggestions to who we might talk to, and it is there for you to make uh, suggestions for yourself to be guests on the TV show. That's how I consider the select committee. It's not just a committee with a webcam in the corner. It is a TV show, and it is well watched by um, lots and lots of people just outside of this sector as well as in. Goodness knows who watches it, but anyway, lots of people do. So, so the first panel is gonna focus on community pharmacy. It, the, the inquiry is not just community pharmacy. As I said, the, it's pharmacy in the, in the wider sense of the word. Yes, we expect to cover funding, the balance between clinical services and dispensing and workforce, including the ever-present question of the additional roles reimbursement scheme. Maybe Janet will touch on that in her presentation next. But we'll also cover areas such as supervision, the government's promised consultation on that, on hub and spoke, what the next steps on that agenda are, on medicine supply <laughs> and the challenges that pharmacists and patients face when items aren't available. And if I went into any community pharmacy today, I suspect that would probably be the first issue that pharmacists would raise. In fact, I know it would be the first issue that they would raise with me. The second session will focus on hospital pharmacy and pharmacies in general practice. So I had started the Pharmacy Integration Fund when I was in government um, and within primary care networks. And here we'll probably cover the benefits of pharmacists in, in the multidisciplinary teams in general practice. We'll hear their perspective on, on that additional role scheme. We'll cover the challenges that hospital pharmacists face working in NHS trusts and shine a light on, on an area that I think often is, is overlooked, the technological challenges that, that I know that the, the IT working group, the CPE, have been working on are, are seeking to smooth those out. But there are still many technical challenges um, and IT challenges between secondary and primary care. We're also going to want to cover stuff that's brought up by the CASA review and automation and innovation. I spoke at the pharmacy show last month in Birmingham, and I was struck by the number of people who raised a hub and spoke, what is going on, and we as a select committee are pressing ministers to try and get an answer to where we are on that. I don't think regs, regulations in Parliament are imminent. Um, but I'm actually less concerned when the regs are, I'm more concerned what it's actually going to say, what it's actually going to do. So we'll, we'll be pressing on that. The other thing that came through loud and clear at the pharmacy show was, was automation. It was the buzzword, it was everywhere I went, it was every stand that I visited in the exhibition, people were talking about automation, they're talking about pharmacy robots. Um, and it's going to have a fantastic <laughs> robot, which I, I think I opened, didn't I, at your, at your HQ in Watford. Um, but, but we're talking about automation in store. And that was definitely a theme. So, of course, there's, there's no guarantees and there's none 
None of that set in stone about what we can get government to do as a result of our work. But they're my thoughts on, on what I think would constitute a good inquiry for, for us to work on. We might look specifically at some of the, the brilliant innovations that are going on in the sector, so if that sparks any ideas and interests and the benefits that can be realised from that. So we want to, we're probably going to be visiting some pharmacies and having a look at where automation is working well. And of course we'll return to workforce, um, but specifically to think about what a pharmacist or a pharmacy technician of the future might look like because we can't really talk about this sector without talking about workforce. So we'll be talking about career pathways, and yes, we'll be talking about apprenticeships. Um, there's no shortage of interest in the work that we're going to be doing on this inquiry. Uh, we're grateful to those who submitted evidence to the written evidence side of it and engaged with us because that's what our work relies on. As I said, select committees are not about opinion. They're not about my opinion. They're about the committee's evidence that it hears. We follow the evidence, and we follow that where it leads, and we make recommendations to ministers. Now, now, I'm very sure that that enthusiasm, that engagement will continue, and as I say, we want to hear from you. Um, just a couple of things I just wanted to touch on for you. So, for those of you who don't know, the Select Committee and my predecessor, Jeremy, set this up. We have an expert panel, which is chaired by Professor Jane Dacre. It has Robert Francis as part of it. And what they do is they look in-depth, they drill into in-depth into some of the policies of government, some of the promises that have been made by government, and then we, we see where we are on delivering on those, on those policies. So they will then produce a CQC-style rating as to how government is doing. And they recently did a piece of work for us on pharmacy, which you may not be surprised to know said that it requires improvement. And I'm not going to go through it all now, um, but the nine commitments evaluated, I think two were rated as good, as five requires improvement and two is inadequate. And then they produce their overall requires improvement. It's all up on our, it's all up on our website and uh, you, can, you can find it there. Um, just, just finally, I just wanted to say that obviously we're doing this separate inquiry on, on pharmacy. We're also in the middle of a major inquiry at the moment on prevention of ill health. Uh, and I want you to understand that the work of a select committee is in many ways it's like the Olympic rings. Our inquiries sit as separate pieces of work, but they interlock as those rings do. So you cannot talk about prevention of ill health without talking about pharmacy and vice versa. So prevention is a key passion of mine. We have 10 different work streams within this big prevention inquiry. It's an absolutely vast piece of work. It has caught the imagination of so many people in the health and care sector. We've, we've never had such a, an input from the public and from the sector into this inquiry. We've already done uh, the vaccination work stream, which of course has big implications to pharmacy. Uh, we've already now done the healthy places where we live, where we work, and how they impact, how they're determinants of poor health. We're now moving on to uh, addictions, so we're looking at, at alcohol, and that will bring in smoking, and then we're going to do sexual health uh, as the as the fourth work stream. So the clerks, I was saying to Janet earlier from CPE, the clerks slightly despair of me in the amount of work that I give them. Somebody said, that one of them said to me the other day that I'm exhausting, and I don't know what they mean by that. But anyway, uh, I, uh, maybe I am. But the fact is, is there's so much to do, and uh, we probably have a year or so to do it before the end of this parliament with the new session opening on Tuesday. So be clear that the prevention inquiry is, to my mind, part of what makes what Hattel said in his introduction, a sustainable NHS. We have a situation where we are increasing health spending faster than GDP is rising. We have a situation where demand is outstripping supply. Now, just put, put it into your context of, of, of medicine supply. When demand outstrips supply, you have a problem. The reason that health and care services in this country have a problem is because demand outstrips supply. Now, you can keep increasing supply. You can increase taxes further. You can spend more on the NHS. And we've never spent more on the NHS. The budget for the NHS in England has never been higher. But ultimately, you're just chasing your tail on that. What you have to do is try and reduce demand. And that's what the NHS was set up to do. It was set up to be a wellness service, not just a sickness service. And there are, there's still too much demand on the system. So unless we get a grip on the levers, uh, on the, the drivers, sorry, of demand, that's why I'm so, so pleased at the Prime Minister's announcement at conference around the smoking. It's such, a, it's such a bold thing to do. And people say it's a bit Cone's hotline, and people say that it's not. Uh, it's not big picture enough. It will save millions of lives. It's as simple as that. 
And when we debate that, I'll be voting uh, wholeheartedly for it in Parliament. But I want to see government not just tick the box now on prevention and think they've done their bit. I want to see them go further and talk about uh, obesity. We know the challenges that are connected with that and the other addictions, which is why we're doing the prevention inquiry. So, you know, I, I would say just, just in conclusion, Hattel, that the work that we are doing as a select committee, I, I don't overblow our importance. You know, I am not, I'm not the minister anymore. It is, for, it is for ministers in this government. It is minister, for ministers in the, in the next government, whatever, whatever shape that looks like, to, to take the work that we are doing and to run with it. But we come, as we heard in the introduction, we come from a good place. We come from somebody at the very, very top of government who not just understands this sector, who's lived it. If we can't make this work for us as a sector, I'm not sure we ever can. So we've got to make sure that we do as much as possible over the next 12 months to keep this issue right here, right at the forefront. And I think you know, I hope you know, knowing me, that I'll do my bit to make sure that we keep doing that. And at that point, I'll speak to you later in the q and I'll leave it there. Thank you.